The academic staff union of universities has told lecturers not to engage in online lectures for students. The president of the union, Professor Biodung Oguyemi, gave the directive in a statement. Schools at all levels have remained shut since March following the spread of coronavirus disease pandemic to Nigeria in February. However, while schools at lower levels, especially the privately owned ones, have commenced online teaching, universities are yet to. And the presidential task force on COVID-19, as at June the 15th of 2020, said it was not safe to reopen schools. Oguyemi, in the memo, said lecturers must not engage in online teaching because without Senate's approval, a vice chancellor has no power to change the mode of lecture delivery. Joining us live is Comrade Karo Mwinaka, former ASU chairperson, Unilag. And also joining us is Osai Precious, who is a student from Ambrose Ali University. She's in studio. But now let's speak to Prof. Good morning, Prof. Do we have Professor Karo on the line? And can thank you, you hear me? All right, thank you for being with us this morning. You're welcome, ma'am. Now, do you stand with the position of ASU on the matter of not implementing online lectures? Help us understand why they have taken such a stance. Um, in the first place, the union is on strike. And um, once the union is on strike, basically there will be no teaching, no meetings, especially when it's a total and comprehensive strike. Secondly, the university is Senate-driven. And... Um, Take University of Lagos, for example, we have two modes of teaching. We have the ODL for distant learning institutes, and we also have the, the one we interface with students, or we, which we usually call them um, in a popular palace, regular students. Uh, I cannot teach my regular students uh, the way I interface with my ODL students. Uh, and so they will have to rectify that. We also have uh, the part-time students program. Now, how are we going to harmonize these things? We, we, the truth is that learning is a two-phase thing. We have the teacher and the, and the students. Are the stu if the teachers are ready, are the students ready, uh, in the, in the, as a consequent reaction to this um, COVID-19 problem, we discovered that a lot of private schools, even primary schools, uh, went online. The, the, the whole processes soon collapsed because they didn't prepare adequately for it. Uh, do we have the, the facilities and the data for students, the, the, the laptop, um, iPad, et cetera, for students? Are, are they properly trained for it? We, 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 we should not just jump into things because other people are doing it. Do we have the capacity? Those are the things we're talking about. And lectures have to be rewritten. Perhaps there are other options, uh, radio, radio lectures, um, a, a lot of other options. We really need to sit back to get these things planned. But, but Most lecturers are may, not even on ground. If I may interject so, you. So the union has just been... Hello? Yeah, if I may interject you, if we are a country that is progressive in terms of its education, what stopped the ASU uh, while uh, COVID-19 is still ongoing and they had gone on strike? Why was there no in negotiation to say, well, maybe we should sort the issue of strike and then move forward? Because is it justified to say, well, they are on strike and then here is COVID? What's the fate of students? How do we progress from here? Now, now this is a very good window. Hello? Yes, I, I can hear I, you. I can get your point. This is a very good window. Why is ASU on strike? So that an agreement should be renegotiated. Now, what stops the government for calling the leadership of ASU and say, okay, part of our renegotiation is let us look at the option of online teaching let us look at the option and what and what do you need. The point is that nobody is sitting down to renegotiate an agreement that has been reached. Uh, as lecturers, I can tell you that many lecturers do conferences. I am I'm interfacing with you now online. But how many of our students have this capacity? And we should not just deceive ourselves because we are going to alienate almost 90% of our students from this. And let us get a point very clear. 
Nigeria is not one. When they were sharing palliative money, they said some parts of the countries are not poor. Equally, there are some parts of this country where we have universities, and we cannot just assume that the students are all rich. They are all the same. So we need to sit down, look at the population of our students, look at their financial capacity, look at the, 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 the infrastructure, electricity, and everything, before we do things, right. the, the, this idea of thinking that we can just jump into online teaching is not going to work. Well, uh, you do agree that education is a crucial part of every country in terms of development and the lives of so many students are, are at stake here and involved here. Now, uh, did, can you clarify for us if the lecturers, the uh, school, the ASU at any time during this period initiated a conversation with the government in terms of the strike? Uh, if, because you're saying, well, the government, what stopped the government? But in the interest of the students who you are caretakers, for whom you are custodians, did, can you clarify if there was any point in time during this lockdown that a conversation was initiated? I'm not just waiting for the government to it come. Is the, you see, the interesting thing to note is this. Why are we on strike? Because we, are, we, we want the government to come to the round table to negotiate. That is just a simple reason. We want the government, we have an agreement that is due for renegotiation. Come, let us renegotiate. The government started bringing in other things. You see, if you look at the, the our national budget, it doesn't in any way show that education is a priority in this country. If we look at the way wages are paid, it doesn't show that university education is a priority. Because you, 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 one cannot really explain why our colleagues in, uh, our colleagues in uh, polytechnics and college of education are better remunerated than those in the university. So you see, if we are to measure this thing through budgetary allocation, I can tell you conclusively that education will come around number five or number six position in our national priorities. Mm -hmm. uh, 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 most of the lecturers, like I speak to you now, the facilities they are using are personal. When last did any university buy a laptop or, or, or have a, a efficient Wi-Fi? All right, you see, comrade. Put okay. in float. All right, uh, just before I let you go, we have a student in the studio, uh, Precious by name. And right. can you just tell us, in the meantime, what is the way forward? What message do you have? People need to go back to school. Um, I, I will appeal that, um, I will appeal clearly. My, my, my appeal is that the government should meet with the leadership of ASU and work out a scheme for comprehensive renegotiation of what is on ground. And uh, already there's a template. The government ought to set up its negotiation team. And also, also already have its own renegotiation team. Let the government set up its renegotiation team. And uh, we are, we're already discussing. We're already discussing. So let, let the, 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 they can negotiate even on Zoom. So what is the problem? I don't know. All right. Thank Everything you so very much. Everything lies in the hand of the Minister of Labor, really. All right. Thank you so very much. I think much. the Minister of Comrade. Labor... Uh, Caro Ogbinaka, for your thoughts. Uh, we will now continue with Precious, who is in the studio. Stay safe out there, sir. All right, Precious, thank you for joining us. You've listened to that conversation with uh, Comrade Caro Ogbinaka there. What's your general assessment of our education system as a student, even before COVID? Okay, thank you very much. Um, the thing is, education, they say, is the bedrock of development. But um, our educational system has already been bisected in myriads of problems, like uh, we have a lack of uh, adequate infrastructures, lack of um, adequate facilities, frequent closures of schools, um, a, in a, a lack of um, qualified teachers, and so many of it. And in addition to all this, then we have the social vices, we have corruption, we have exam malpractices, we have cultism. So, and also we should also know that even way before COVID-19 pandemic, the, our educational system had already been characterized by all these problems. Mm -hmm. So now, how do you expect me to learn as a student when I cannot even 
comprehend what you're trying to make me understand. Mm. So essentially you're saying the odds are already so much yes. even before and COVID. And then in our educational system, we get to see a lot of students that do not even get to visit their libraries all through their years in school. Mm -hmm. And some only get to visit maybe because of their final year projects or anything related to that. Mm -hmm. Now the facilities are not available. So you agree with the uh, comrade there when he's saying, uh, well, we can't do online yet because we don't have the facilities. Yeah, we do not have the facilities, we do not have the capacities, we do not have what it takes because it's not just about going online. There are a whole lot of things that needs to be put in place and provisions have not been made for all this. Right, but Precious, I mean, if you take a look at where you are now as a student, when you compare yourself with maybe your other folks, uh, other students abroad, you would realize that there's a difference. With COVID-19, they have moved on, they are continuing their education. Yeah. But, you know, in Nigeria, education is stalled. You know, he is talking about ASU, there's ASU to deal yeah. with, there is COVID. Say, even if COVID goes today, we don't know the situation, whether ASU is going to call off the strike. How does this make you feel oh well it's really it's it it's really not a good one because first of all we want to move on we want to go back to school um, if provisions can be made for everything needed sure we are okay we are fine you know going online you understand we're fine learning online but the fact is we do not have what it takes mm -hmm. all right you've been at home um, even before covid because of the, the strike and then here is covid and we don't know how long this is going to take and you know the state federal government uh, we don't know any definite day that uh, schools will reopen in the meantime what have you been doing to keep you know sane um, I've been trying to pick up one or two online courses and um, some of my friends and students that I also know of, they are trying to. But of course it's trainers, it's really not easy because first of all we have to think of uh, the lack of um, sufficient access access to insufficient um, data, we have to think of um, electricity mm -hmm. and um, all of that and then also some other students are also trying to pick up one or two traits trying to learn one or two skills like hairdressing um, babbing tailoring fashion and all of that mm -hmm. and then some also just pick up um, part-time jobs or internship jobs just to while away time all right, thank you so very much, Precious. We can only hope that we make progress in yeah. terms, you know, as far as this conversation on education is concerned. Thank you for being with us this morning. Thank you.